All right, so let's build a book from scratch uh, using the Storyteller's Kit. I'm going to try to make this uh, a relatively simple book uh, at first, and then we'll get a little bit more complex. But it is going to be a, an example that I end up submitting to the App Store, so it'll be kind of fun for you guys to be able to see what uh, what created that and also be able to download it uh, to kind of, you know, compare or at least take a look at a working version of it. So uh, when you downloaded the Storyteller's Kit, you've got uh, two versions, a demo, which has lots of assets already into it. Uh, so if you were to look inside the assets folder or inside of the scenes folder over here, you're going to see lots of stuff. Uh, what you're probably going to want to do when you're working with it is copy out the clean copy. And uh, this one has very few assets inside of it. Uh, so if you have just downloaded that, I would say leave that alone and then just select this folder, hit copy, and then just paste that into another folder completely separate from wherever you download the kit, uh, maybe in your Dropbox or something like that, so it's always backed up. And uh, and then that way you're gonna work out of here. And you can see that uh, in the same place that I you know, uh, have my clean copy, I've also just got a folder called Working Assets, and I tend to put in Photoshop files, Flash files, everything inside of here, so they kind of stay close together, You know, all my original source assets. In case I need to change something, I think that's a little bit of a better practice that you know just kind of throwing all that on your desktop and uh, hoping you find it later if you need it uh, and you can see I've got inside of here two images that we're going to use uh, for kind of a, a cover page and then like an opening menu page uh, to navigate around the book and uh, these are JPEGs usually I don't use JPEGs in a, a PNG I mean an Xcode project I'll go with a PNG uh, file type which allows for transparency but uh, because these are rather large images they take up the entire screen uh, they compress down a little bit better with uh, JPEG you can see they're about a, at a megabyte if this was a PNG file it's gonna be about two megabytes which is a lot of kind of unnecessary uh, data to uh, to throw in there so uh, let's go ahead and uh, open up the clean copy and we're gonna we'll talk about importing those images in in just a little bit but uh, I do want to point out that I'm gonna go over a lot of very general things with Xcode uh, right now and if you are kind of looking to just start setting up your scene file I don't blame you and you can go ahead and skip uh, to the second video so what we've got here is uh, you're probably gonna when you open this up probably gonna be either, either the, uh, the the general settings uh, which has some of your iTunes connect information in here or, or eventually will like your bundle identifier that's sometimes called your app ID uh, your version that's uh, when you submit this your app to Apple you're gonna want to have this version over here what I have in here is a build number and this just kind of applies to the my internal build number for the kit so if you ask me a question I say well what builder are you using let me make sure that's not a, you know not something we patched up or whatever uh, you know you can go oh well I have build 1.10 or you know whatever uh, and then uh, you've got some of your uh, your orientation settings down here so by default this is in landscape mode there's nothing to stop you from setting this uh, to portrait mode though that is uh, fine and perfectly acceptable and you don't really need to toggle off anything or change anything over here otherwise uh, and then we've got a uh, the the property list which is going to be how you handle all of the kind of interaction with the kit uh, that prevents you from having to do anything with the code so settings that you set in here uh, obviously get recognized by the code and it knows what to do with all that stuff so we're gonna go you know we're gonna spend a lot of time in the property list uh, later on I do want to point out though uh, initially that you should not ever change this name okay I know it's gonna frustrate you to be able to have to, say, to keep looking at storytellers kit uh, but that's just a project name it is locked in there Xcode used to have an option to let you rename a project even they got rid of it because it just wasn't perfect and there's all these little files that kind of matriculate with the with the project name so don't rename that and, and certainly don't rename uh, this over here you're in for kind of a world of pain down the road if you do but that has no effect on your app icon name or your name in iTunes connect and th those are two separate things by, by the way and if you do want to um, change the app icon name go over here to your fonts and info.plist and click on info.plist you can see the bundle display name says your app name so if I were to install this right now on my phone it's gonna the icons gonna say your app name or it might kind of truncate that a little bit so uh, but feel free to change that right away all right that'll make you feel a little bit better and again the name of the app is really determined by its listing in iTunes connect which you can kind of you know, change as often as you want. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, setting up your scene 
uh, in the next video, but let's just talk about some general general stuff about the scenes. So uh, if you look at this right now, we got cover and we got cover phone. Uh, these are our two scenes. Where we're going to kind of drag out stuff here and start putting in images and cameras, whatever it is, uh, to you know show something <laughs> to people when the book loads up. Uh, but let's talk about the connection between the property list and uh, these particular files. So if you go over here to the property list, you can see you've got a dictionary named pages and a dictionary uh, you can think of as essentially just kind of like a grouping or a folder of this stuff. And you can, you know, so you can kind of unfold things like over here. It's not too different than, you know, you unfolding things inside of your finder and, and seeing what's inside, right? So uh, kind of don't think of that term as that fancy. <laughs> um, and uh, we've got uh, one page in the clean copy just called cover. And the kit is hard coded to always open up cover as the initial page. Now, uh, otherwise you can just name your pages anything you want. You know, it could be underwater page, right? If it's a book about underwater stuff. Uh, totally of your choosing. And again, I, I kind of think it's best to copy what's already in uh, the kit. So, you know, if you're going to make a new page, just copy one that you've already got. So copy, paste, right? Do something like that. Uh, and uh, so the connection here between these scenes is that it's going to use this as the base name of a scene to look up. All right. So we got cover and uh, by default, what's going to happen is the kit is going to look for a cover scene, but if uh, you're using the iPhone and you have a cover phone, or essentially whatever the base name is, plus this uh, suffix of phone, it's going to prioritize that and open up that one instead. Now, if I didn't have this in here, it's just going to resort to cover regardless of the device. And uh, the kit kind of favors the iPad a little bit. I kind of I think more of storybooks as being on the iPad. So uh, it, you don't need to put in cover pad. Uh, if you're on the iPad, just leave the base name as it is and don't put any sort of suffix inside of there. But you can see that the cover phone then has a, a a, a scene size that is uh, for really kind of the iPhone. Well, ratio wise, it's for all of the recent iPhones that kind of have a, uh, it's basically what the widescreen ratio is of uh, movies. And, uh, and then for the, I or for the regular cover, it's just, this is, you know, the, the typical uh, iPad size. So if you were going to make a, a new scene for your underwater page, I think the best thing to do is to go over here and just hit uh, duplicate and then you're going to say underwater page. You're going to want to give it that same base name of whatever you had in the property list and then just be sure you this targets is checked off. It should be by default but you can't always rely on that. And then you can see that you've now got a new underwater page scene, right? And again, just double check that you've named this exactly the same as what you've got over here. Uh, but we're not going to make an underwater page. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we're going to delete that out. Uh, when you are deleting things, uh, I tend to think move to trash is the best bet. <laughs> so just completely get rid of it. And uh, now let's go ahead and talk about uh, importing in our assets. So you can see that I, I do have an initial uh, image in here that uh, you guys are welcome uh, to completely delete if you want to. Although if you do replace this with um, your logo for the book, it is going to get seen over here in your launch screen. Uh, I believe in, yes, in the launch screen uh, storyboard. So if you do completely delete that image, um, you and you don't want to show your own logo, then you just select this and uh, just oh, actually, oh, I believe you guys select it through there and then just delete that uh, out. But if you leave it in and you just replace your uh, logo with mine, uh, it'll magically appear on that uh, particular page. And at any time, if you want to kind of, uh, well, you could always drop in a new image inside of here, but you could also, if you wanted to just kind of replace it in the finder, is go show in finder, and that's gonna actually bring up where the image lives inside of the project, and you kind of get an idea of where that's at uh, over there. Uh, so what's up with the 1X and 2X stuff? Um, as many of you know, probably your um, more modern iOS devices all support uh, either kind of 2X or 3X images, which are higher, um, or their retina display images, which basically means that they have uh, more uh, pixels per point, uh, just makes for a crispier image, right? Uh, now, what I've actually been doing recently uh, with my scenes is setting the scene size higher uh, than what is typical, and uh, that way that the images that I bring in to use are all gonna be uh, bigger than what's needed, 
so they can actually be at that 1x resolution and then the scene just essentially scales down and uh, and then because the source images is bigger which that's really all a retina display image is anyway it's just a bigger image uh, it, it scales down stays nice and crispy and uh, that way too you can copy your images between the uh, iPhone your iPad scene and um, your uh, tvOS scenes uh, a little bit more smoothly because your your uh, now we do have a separate project for uh, making storyteller kits uh, for the uh, TV and you can copy images back and forth between them, but it is a separate project. Uh, but if you were to open up the cover scene on that project, it's gonna be this exact same ratio right here, but the size is 1920 by 1080. And that 1080 might sound familiar from what, 1080p TVs, right? So uh, what I'm gonna do is actually set my cover phone scene to this exact size, and then that way any images that I bring in here are, are gonna cover up you know, the, this total scene size. And then when I copy you know, back and forth from the TV to the phone, uh, I don't have to scale anything up or down. They're all gonna be perfect because what? I'm, I'm working at the same size as the TV resolution. And for the phone, all I'm gonna do is, I mean, I'm sorry, for the iPad, all I'm gonna do is just double what I've got over here. Oops, so that's gonna be 2048. Uh, and I believe my math is right, 1536 on this. And uh, kind of the same deal. So my images are gonna be the uh, about double what they uh, well the, I should say the scene is about double what it needs to be or exactly in this case and uh, and then the images are just going to scale down you know to half that and uh, be nice and crispy uh, and you'll notice that I had to kind of move the the camera around that I've got in here by default and uh, you know I think I'm going to name this the camera instead of just camera pad so uh, your camera is always going to be the, the same exact size as the scene. So if, you're, if I were to change the scene, it's going to change the size of this. And um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just copy this into the iPhone as well, just to show you guys how that, um, that that's the case. So you can see as soon as I paste that in, it keeps the same name as the camera, but it changes to be the same size as the scene itself. Um, one cool thing that uh, I think is worth uh, pointing out right away is, uh, look at this, you can drag out a sprite from inside of here, you can texture it with whatever you want, let's just say it's going to be um, Cartoon Smart logo, right? And then make it a parent of the camera, okay, so you just toggle this, camera, you know, parent, the camera. Now anywhere I move the camera, that's going to stay fixed to that. So this is great for things like uh, a GUI, you know, or heads up display. I know we're not really making games here, but there's plenty of reasons to have uh, some images or labels even stuck to the camera so that you can move the camera around, you can pan that, and this stuff stays, you know, kind of visually fixed uh, in place while everything around it uh, basically moves. Because when you're moving the camera, you know, you're, you're not seeing what you're seeing here where it looks like the camera's moving. What it seems like is everything that's not part of the camera is what's uh, what's moving. And the cool thing about this too is you can actually scale the camera at times, and it's not going to affect the uh, the things that are inside of here. Uh, so just um, just that's just a little note uh, for later on, uh, because I'm going to start to wrap up our initial setup video here, and uh, then what we're going to do in the beginning of the next video is actually um, uh, import in our images to. Uh, use inside of the uh, the scene. So hopefully this gave you guys a little bit of an idea of the initial setup of the uh, Storytellers Kit 2.